Welcome to the latest episode of Let's Talk Mental Health, an NTUSU initiated series exploring the youth mental health landscape in Singapore. I am Marshall and I will be your moderator for today. So here we have four of our very own professors who will be sharing with us their experience and advice for our undergraduates. Let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Adina from School of Biological Sciences, Dr. Kumaran from Nanyang Business School, Prof. Sabrina from College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences, and Prof. Shannon from College of Humanities, Arts and Social Sciences as well. We hope to start conversations on building mutual understanding between professors and students and ways to promote a healthy academic environment that prioritizes mental well-being. So we will first begin with a few simple questions to start the ball rolling. Professors, please uh, use the placards here to show whether you agree or disagree with the following statements. Now for the first statement, academics and internships are major causes of stress in students. Do you agree or disagree? Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, please elaborate on your answers based on uh, whatever you guys have put up. Uh, I also couldn't uh, just like totally agree or disagree with the statement. Usually in the middle of the semester, so students will have some behavioral changes then they tell you that uh, they are under stress. So for example, like they will start uh, being absent from classes. Okay, or being just like, uh, feel, you can see the sadness in their eyes. Right? Yes. And then so for some of the reason, it's really uh, because of the stress, right? Lots of deadline to, 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 to meet, right? And then, uh, but there are also some personal issue like uh, family issue that or other kind of challenges that will uh, bring just like uh, cause stress, right? Interrupt their study. Yeah, so that's why uh, it's pretty obvious. But when it comes to internship, I think it depends on the uh, work environment. In their um, progress report, they will say that they are very happy because they have a very supportive uh, a boss at the company or uh, organization culture is is also very relaxing, so they are feel they can feel free to express o their opinions, right? Or uh, very open to new ideas, right? But sometimes, uh, it again, it depends on the the work culture. So that's why it's a mix. Yeah, it's a, I cannot agree or disagree. This thing. Yeah. yeah. For me, it was mostly disagree. It's better perhaps to think of it at the more upstream level. So. Why is it that exams and assignments and internships are stressful? And I think a, a good reason why is, is that these things are linked to how people think of themselves. Whether it's their self-worth, whether it's um, their notions of success or future success that uh, might happen. So uh, in the recent UK report released by the Students' Union, a survey conducted in five autonomous universities has actually shown that study and work commitment is you know, the biggest stressor among students. This brings me to my next statement, which uh, would be, competition among students is intense, but also necessary at the same time. So what do you guys feel about that? Again, I think it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When we talk about competition, it may not necessarily and let me emphasize this, not necessarily be competing with another person, but competing in setting your bar higher than what you have achieved, perhaps last semester, mm -hmm. perhaps last week. Now, if that mindset is being ingrained in one, then the competition right, uh, would be healthy, constructive, because without competition, Right? I, I think you tend to get into this uh, uh, aspect of stagnation. So the last statement would be, both students and professors have negative work-life balance. So again, show whether you guys disagree or agree. <laughs> 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 we have mixed answers now. <laughs> Maybe you want to share first why do you agree to that? I actually, I found that I allocate more time to work. Oh, yeah, so actually I... I have to work on weekend, yeah, because there, there are stuff, right, that you have to clear. So that's why when you have too much work to do, what you can do is you shorten the time that you can rest. Yeah. Starting from uh, the end of the circuit breaker period, I, 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 I try to have a different lifestyle because I went through a very deep reflection. I say, oh, what if there's no COVID-19, my life could have been much better. Yeah. So that's why I try to um, uh, sign up for classes, I mean, uh, baking classes, classes that uh, uh, I can learn how to make uh, different types of desserts and then I, I will show photos and then 
uh, share it with my student and sometimes I, I, I share the dessert with a student. So that's why I think it's very good because then I, I think that oh actually life is actually fun. I think this is how I try to uh, get the work-life balance. Yeah. Yeah, and then as for students, why I, I think that students may, may, may have um, just like a work-life imbalance because when I, uh, because I, I wake up at 5.30 a.m. And then, and then I start checking email at around 7 a.m. So I clear the, the email sent by students at 3 a.m. So it means that I think that they stay yeah. open light yes. and it's a very, very late. So I can imagine that, oh, they must be very busy. How do you make that um, work-life balance where you need to find avenues, in, in my view? For example, I teach management leadership and we do a lot of case studies. Right? So when I go out with my family, for example, very simply Starbucks, for example. Right? So I make that an interesting, I talk to people there, you know, with my family. I try to take a couple of photos and then I bring that to the class, of course, relevant to that topic. And I share my experiences and make that as a simple reflection for them in line to the topic. So what happens? This is a good example of work-life balance because you are actually kind of overarching work to a certain extent, but you're enjoying your personal life as well. The students have to find out their interests and try to weave into their study plan, for example, right? Uh, going out for a coffee, taking the necessary break, juggling with, uh, you know, and enjoying the process of uh, studying is important. Oh, thank you so much, Pros, for sharing. Uh, now that we have reached a consensus on the current landscape of mental health among our youths, uh, it's time to know our professors a bit more better as well and see what advice uh, you guys can offer to our students. So, Profs, do you know how to play the game called uh, Never Have I Ever? No. No. <laughs> so basically, uh, you guys have to put up one hand and then I will share a statement. And if you guys have done it before, you have put one finger down. Aww. So the put first the person who, who puts down all fingers will be the loser. First up, never have I ever been late for a class. Be it when you guys, you know, were students or even now at school. Oh, students as well. Yeah. Students. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think uh, very much other than the values of family, I think it's about the first career because I was in defence mm. and when we talk about defence, we actually have to be there by 7 o'clock. So that means that I wake up around 4 o'clock, 4 in the morning. And that uh, culture or ethos of being disciplined yeah. right, uh, in time uh, helps quite a bit. And, uh, and after when I get to the corporate, same thing, it has been a culture of being early. Uh, most of the time, I tend to always plan early. So it means 8.30 class, I, my target to be in the class will be by 8.10. Okay, next statement. Never have I ever procrastinated from work such as grading students' assignments. <laughs> well... <laughs> wow. Okay, so if no right, feel free to share in a student's point of view as well. Okay, when you guys were students and studying as well. For their essay, so most of the time I try to just like... Uh, yeah, finish all the grading as soon as possible and then mark entry and then and then done. Because other, otherwise then I will feel, actually feel very nervous and I couldn't sleep well if I do not finish it as soon as possible. So uh, I was uh, in a circumstance that I had to work and study. So time for me personally was very important. So that value system uh, has been, become an habitual aspect, behavioural aspect within me. When I became an academic, uh, together with my very close friend, I wrote a book called Time Mastery, so that whatever experiences that we went through, we want to share those uh, experiences together with some evidence-validated uh, aspect that we did uh, to many other youths and even working adults and many other people. That's our motivation. Never have I ever felt anxious presenting in front of the entire cohort. Back to the day when I was a PhD student and then I got uh, an opportunity to, to present in an international uh, conference. And because I, I, in that panel, I had to uh, present together with other profs. But at that time, I was a PhD student. Mm. So that's why I just um, worry about my performance because I don't know what, what uh, my performance would be. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to the next statement. Never have I ever failed to attain expectations for myself. <laughs> Maybe you guys can share how you guys overcome that stress from this. 
from very early age, I was very eager to do things very good, very good. It has to be perfect. It has to be better than anyone other because I was doing sport and I, I was trained as a, a gymnast. But indeed, it is very important for ourselves to find what is healthy and what is not healthy. Where are we actually? And if we do not meet expectation, it's not end of the world. Just go back to the start point and try again. And that's where we are actually learning ourselves more. And uh, it's, it's not without any reason said, that's what is not killing me, it's making me stronger. It's, it's true indeed, we are, we are just trying out and finding where and how far we can go. Okay, so before we move on to the last question, can you just have a show of hands, uh, what are your lives now? Okay, so uh, Dr. Adina has two, uh, Dr. Kumaran has three, Prof. Sabrina has three, and then Prof. Shadon, he has sadly one <laughs> left. Okay, I so... I no life. <laughs> here's the last question. Never have I ever felt burnt out from work and thought that, you know, I should take a mental health day away from work. Wow, congrats, Prof. Shannon. I don't really have much of an experience to share. I mean, I feel burnt out all the time and then I just say, tomorrow I'm not doing work. So that's... <laughs> that's, that's how I take uh, mental health days off. Um, I think for academics, like for me, I, I, I work in seasons. So there are periods of time where it's really, really intense and I need to do a lot of stuff like grading and like research and all that. And then once I feel like it's too much, I, then I tell myself I need a day off. I'm going to have tea or something like that. And that's what I do. I mean, it's seasons of up and down. Yeah, now we have our chosen one for this game. Uh, however, uh, there's no profit for everyone here, so luckily. <coughs> yeah, so uh, this is for everyone uh, watching as well as the props. Uh, you know, to keep yourself a uh, pat on their back and tell yourself that, you know, it's perfectly normal it's okay. to experience difficult okay. periods in life. It's okay with zero for this game. <laughs> <laughs> for students, you know, uh, do not be afraid to speak up and seek help for, or for advice from those around you. As you can see that even our own professors here can sympathize with you. Uh, we all have uh, ups and downs, we're all human, so yes. As the people who spend the most time in university with students, besides you know your friends as well, uh, we hope that students and professors can actively work together to create a more caring and empathetic community in NTU. So Profs, can you share how you see us achieving this goal? I think first of all, it is about trust, right? I think um, from a young age, we are always, I mean, growing up in Singapore, Singapore school system, people are always worried about cheating or like, or people taking advantage of certain policies and things like that. Um, and I think the first thing we have to build an understanding, is an understanding that um, people are not trying to uh, take shortcuts or people are not trying to, to deceive you in any way, right? If that can be established, then I think we can be a bit more open about being a lot more flexible around our deadlines, allowing grace days or things like that. I think um, that trust first has to be built between the faculty and the students. Um, and I think as faculty, we, we also have to extend that trust, right? Um, to, to, to make sure that we don't let those who have genuine issues suffer at the expense of those who are trying to perhaps game the system or, or, or whatnot, right? I think, I think for me, at least, my bias is towards letting that be, right? Um, I'd rather have someone successfully game the system than miss out on someone who might need real help. I mean, that, 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 that for me is, is, is the case, yeah. yeah. As earlier, uh, Shannon has mentioned, that the, the fundamental aspect is about trust. But once, once that has been built, I think the next step is really about getting out there with a growth mindset, agility, uh, the exposure. Even if you are not able to, perhaps for some reason you did your best, but your grade is not out there, it is not the end of the world. But what can you learn from that incident, from that uh, outcome, and then spring back? I would want to aspire to create a learning culture where there is growth, agility, Right? What can you gain as much as possible before you step out to the real world? You just have to want to work with us. We are here. We are anyway here. We are waiting for you just to come to us, <laughs> approach us, and ask us whether we are willing to do that. And we are. We are definitely. So we can build many things together, but we need to be together.
Thank you all so much for the candid sharing today. Uh, we have come to the end of episode 2 of our Let's Talk Mental Health series. Do stay tuned for the final episode coming up soon. Bye-bye.